Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. So, what happens in Season 4 of Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous? The animated Netflix series that features a storyline of campers stranded on Isla Nublar fending off dinosaurs after the fall of Jurassic World has left a pretty big impact on the franchise. And Jurassic Park fans are eagerly awaiting a trailer for the next batch of episodes to drop any time now. But with little to no information given for what we can expect to see, it can be a bit difficult to theorize on what the new season will be about, much less of how it ties into Jurassic World Dominion, as Colin Trevorrow has already promised. For today's video, I've brought on fellow YouTuber Swerve to go over some theories on the series and see if we can discuss just how this show will continue. Will we see more of the Scorpius Rex? What about the Spinosaurus, Site B, and Manticore? Let us know what all of you guys think in the comments down below. So Swerve, what do you think is on the boat? This is the last thing that we kind of got any information from season three. It's a mystery that there is a dinosaur on there. We just don't know what it is. What is your opinion about this whole boat situation and what do you think it could be? Well, you know, we know it's not going to be large and some people have said it could be a baby Spinosaurus, but personally, I don't think we could see anything of the Baby Spinosaurus? Yeah, I've, I've heard that a few times and I'm, I'm not too sure why. Maybe it's just people being hopeful for a Spinosaurus. Yeah, I, um, that's, that's an interesting theory. Um, it didn't sound like admit, one, but... Uh, yeah, no, admittedly it kind of sounds like a Spinosaurid, but not Spinosaurus. Mm -hmm. Maybe a baby Baryonyx, because we know they were on the that's boat. That's true. Uh, they were last seen at the end of Season 2 on the boat, so God knows how long they were on the boat for. They could have nested there. For instance, and maybe the baby Baryonyx wasn't aware that the uh, the parents left, and at the end of season three, we saw them about to kill one of the mercenaries. So we know they are not on the boat. Could be a baby ba Baryonyx, but some people have been talking about a baby E750. That's yeah. Maybe a Dilophosaurus. You know, loads of potential creatures. Um, but whatever it is, we know it's not large. It would definitely be a smaller breed. Yeah, and and because it's smaller, it kind of it narrows down our choice really, really low. So. Baby Baryonyx would make a little more sense. Um, a Monolophosaurus is something that I think could be a possibility. But there's also the idea of it being something like, let's say, um, even though I think it'd be very silly if they went in that direction, uh, just a Compi. Um, I, don't, I don't think a Compi yeah. would be that difficult to navigate around. One of them could just grab it and chuck it in the sea. Uh, but like <laughs> yeah, because it's some some episodes in season two and season three made it seem like compies are so dangerous you can't go anywhere near them, and then other episodes make it seem like they're just rats and you can play around with them. So I think it's like if it's it's weird. if there's more than one compie, you gotta watch out. But just the one, yeah. then I don't think they'd have a problem with it. I mean, you've got like a group of people versus one tiny dinosaur. I personally yeah. think the idea that it is. A baby E750 is the most interesting because what that basically does is it plays with the idea that the animals reproduced asexually and when you think you get away from them there's another little guy that's stuck on the boat <laughs> and it's also cool yeah. because you play into other things that are very characteristic of what they've done before in these movies for example like Colin Trevorrow's always said that he likes these Jurassic World movies to have a very Amblin feel and with a baby E750 that can reproduce like that it's very Gremlins, it's very Gizmo Mogwai, but also right. for people that are my age and grew up watching Godzilla from 1998, that's kind of one of the things in that movie. Oh, there's my dogs. Uh, so uh, yeah, there's the whole idea that there could be another little dinosaur that reproduces really, really quickly like that. I like that idea. Um, I don't know if you like that idea. It would include more stuff with hybrids, but... Um, I don't think it would be too egregious as long as they don't do it overtly crazy. Um, what do you think? The thing is, they're they're aware that they um, reproduce asexually, and if it is a baby E750, let's say, there's a potential chance to tame it. But depending on what if, what traits it takes from its parent or parent, shall I say, mm -hmm. um, kind of deciphers the story. Because if it is trainable and can kind of be on the side of the campers they could use it to the best of abilities but if not and they go down a side that 
they start to realize they, they yeah if they go down the area where they start to realize if this grows into a bigger one they'll just keep reproducing right and it'll become more of a plague we have to kill off the baby one before it grows up yeah which was they might go down that storyline yeah which was an idea from that godzilla movie so i mean i don't know if they're mm. going to go and that do that or not but it's the most rewarding i think from a narrative point of view it could just be a dilophosaurus i mean <laughs> yeah. I, what do you that would be cool but we know that what they're setting up here is chaos to break out on the boat. So they yeah. introduce the idea that there's a dinosaur stowing away. Maybe this is what knocks them off course from the mainland. If not, the Mosasaurus that escaped like literally a couple episodes beforehand. So this whole introduction of a dinosaur on the boat is really just to get them to sort of go off course or to have some sort of chaos before they meet their destination. Um, I just think E750 is the most interesting route they could take, but speaking of E750 and speaking of the whole boat situation, uh, the only other people that really know about it are Manticore, because their drone caught that image of uh, the yeah. Scorpius Rex while it was running around on the island. So what are the possibilities, in your opinion, that Manticore, after being teased for three seasons now, showing up like never, but being teased since the first, do you think this Scorpius Rex could draw them out and, and officially put them in the story for season four? Well, the thing is, why are they still snooping around after six months of the fall of Jurassic and World? And why haven't we seen them it's, yet? Exa exactly. Why are they using drones? I mean, it, it could not be Manticorp at the end of the day. We have no, I, no idea to suggest that they are Manticorp, but I think it's safe to say it will mm. be. But why are they still there six months after the fall? and clearly they want something and i i can't imagine a storyline with a new hybrid e750 would not be linked with a new company but surely they must be linked in some way um whether that's they want e750 whether they told dr Wu to create e750 something of the sorts there's they, they have to show up and have some sort of idea about what this new mysterious hybrid was i would hope so i mean They've been, t we know that they've like basically been harassing Sammy's family. We know that they hired her to like get some intel on Injun slash Mizrani. And they just, they never showed up. So like, it just, it feels like if they're never, if they don't come in season four, when are they going to come? Season five? Like, and by that time, what is it going to be the end of Camp Cretaceous? <laughs> so like, yeah. they've got to come <laughs> back eventually. I was, I was shocked they weren't in, in season two. So I feel mm -hmm. like... Manticore's return could tie into the uh, Scorpius Rex in some way, shape, or form. It's just, I don't... This is so interesting. Camp Cretaceous has given us, like, no information on this company, apart from the fact that they exist. Like, what's going on? Yeah. We, we know nothing, right? Like... And I, I, you would have thought after two seasons we would have got information regarding it, but yeah. we just don't. It's, it's really weird, actually. Um, a lot of people think that Manticore could just be a front for Biosyn, so... Yeah, I, I think I think that's probably the most logical mm -hmm. because adding another company doing exactly the same thing what Biosyn used to do for InGen, and I, I don't know. I just feel like again it'll be reinventing the wheel at that point. It's no, yeah, no purpose. It, it's it's all very. This is why we are having this conversation is because nobody really knows where season four is going to go. So there's a lot of yeah, opportunities. They set up really nicely. Yeah. Well, this is the thing too. We talk about the boat. There's a dinosaur in the boat. Something's going to go bad on it. We already know. Like, you don't get away from dinosaurs on a boat out at sea very easily. Like, Manticore knows about E750. Mm -hmm. That could be what it is. But where are they going? Now, they would lead you to believe that they could be trying to get back to the mainland, and they are. But, like, I, I don't think they can. Because if they go back to the mainland with a dinosaur pre-Fallen Kingdom, this is, remember, the events are still 2016 in Camp Cretaceous. So, yeah. with 2018 being the actual introduction of dinosaurs in the mainland via Fallen Kingdom, I don't think that's where they're heading, which is what leading... <laughs> it's what leads most people to believe that Season 4 is going to take place on Isla Sorna. Now, right. they've set it up pretty well. You know, they're going somewhere. Chaos breaks out on the boat with a dinosaur that's been stowing away. Knocks them off course. And it may not even be Site B. It could be one of the islands in the Las Cinco Mortes archipelago. But if it is Isla Sorna, how likely do you think it is that we will go there? I mean, what is your opinion? 
I, th I think it's inevitable at this I point, do too. especially since the first opening scene for Camp Cretaceous was basically easily sorted. That's right, it was. And I think that, yeah, I think they might link back to that in some way. You know, maybe they, they arrive on Isla Sauna, they're running away from the Buck T Rex. Maybe. Oh, that would be cool. And, uh, <laughs> and, and Darius specifically falls into a group of, um, of bones. And he looks for a raptor skull, just like he did in the video yeah, game, yeah. Uh, to get the raptors fighting the T-Rex, you know, something like that, just to link back to the to the start of Camp Cretaceous. I think that'd be pretty. That cool. would be. But awesome. there are loads of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we haven't really had anything of the sort since Jurassic Park, have we? I mean, I guess they kind of replicated it with the Scorpius Rex and Blue, but having raptors take on a larger Rex type of uh, dinosaur would be. Would be it would awesome. be very fun. But with. Yeah, but with with Isla Sauna. There's a lot of indications, you know, we have that Camp Cretaceous game, we have the campers leaving the island, I assume they wouldn't go back to Nublar because I think most of the story is done mm. and told there now for Camp Cretaceous. Mm. Uh, they could go to another um, Muertes Archipelago Island, um, I believe in Evolution 1, uh, the video game, obviously it's not canon, but there was a mention of Site C yeah. being Isla Muerta, I think, yep. uh, from Ian Malcolm himself, so... They could uh, possibly go in deeper to that story, maybe make that canon, um, but realistically, they wouldn't bring a dinosaur back to the mainland. And mm -hmm. it, we know there's a dinosaur on the boat. There's a compass that was emphasized a lot during season three, and I highly anticipate that to fall overboard because of the Mosasaurus or whatever is on the boat. And then that way they lose track and they get onto Isla Sauna. Not only that, Jurassic World Dominion photos already state that Isla Sauna is going to make an appearance right. some way, either mentioned, storylined, or actually go there. There's going to be one of those three so sauna has to take part somehow and maybe even have a backstory of camp cretaceous i have a feeling this is what's going to be what ties in dominion and camp cretaceous because i think it's safe to say I, yeah. it, it's just it makes way too much sense we already have seen the photos from the set that colin trevorrow showed himself of like that embryo box that says site b isla sorna and now with yeah the kids leaving the island and you think everything's safe they can't go to them they can't go to the mainland like it <laughs> no. it, it, it just it would be very weird if they do because we know that no dinosaurs were really tracked as being on the mainland until 2018, two years later. So the only other place that's close by Nublar would be Las Cinco Mortes. And like, if you put it on Site B, you can open up the idea to, or you can open up the conversation to all these questions that we've had about the island for the last three years. Like, what's going on there? You know, what happened to the dinosaurs? Like, what is the state of Sorna? We could finally get those answers in Season 4. And speaking of that, we could also go into the return of the Spinosaurus, which I think is, if it's not in Dominion, it's inevitable. It could be in, it's probably in both Dominion and Camp Cretaceous. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it will be in both mm -hmm. some way. Because, again, Isla Sorna is linked from... Um, Dominion, and if Isla Sauna hypothetically does return in Camp Cretaceous, obviously, what do you think of Isla Sauna? You think of the Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptors and the Spinosaurus. Right. Those are the main dinosaurs. And to bring back Isla Sauna and not have a Spinosaurus, I think they'd be, be a bit silly, or they missed an opportunity. It'd there. be a, a so big think, missed opportunity, totally. Exactly, exactly. So I think hypothetically and realistically, Spinosaurus should really return in, uh, in Camp Cretaceous. And even still, you know, we know Giganotosaurus and Tyrannosaurus Rex are going to be confirmed in Dominion, and uh, they may even rematch and fight from what they did in the prologue. They will, yeah. But what's the Spinosaurus going to do? Because loads of people anticipate the Spinosaurus for Dominion, but there's not really a backstory, there's no um, evidence to suggest that it's still alive, or if it's dead, or anything of the sorts. You know, we don't really know too much about it. And Camp Cretaceous, if Spinosaurus does show up in Dominion, Camp Cretaceous has the perfect chance to tell the story of the Spinosaurus. Yeah, and, so. and like it's going to do the work that Fallen Kingdom was going to do when they reintroduced the Spinosaurus before cutting right, that whole yeah. thing. So not only that, remember, they've been selling toys that say Camp Cretaceous on the Spinosaurus. So like yeah, they've been doing that for a long time and because <laughs> it's just it makes too much sense. Like problem on the boat, go to Site B, find the Spinosaurus like and I don't think up. this is crazy. This, this to me sounds very logical, rational thinking. Like, uh, and and I think it would be even more interesting because we know that if they aren't going to be on Nublar, then we're not going to see the 1993 T Rex in season four. 
Um, at least... Right, yeah, neither with blue either. Yeah, so you gotta fill in that antagonistic role with uh, the, Sp the Spinosaurus. And, you know, if you also look at Blue's character model, uh, it, it looks a lot more like the JP3 Raptors than it does Blue from the movies. Yeah. So I think yeah. if they go to Site B, you could repurpose that model and just make it the, the, the Raptors from JP3. Uh, exactly. It, it's, it just makes way too much sense. And now, this is the other thing, too. If they go to Sorna, and if it has people on it, um, because we already know Dominion's doing some teasing with Sorna. So, okay, what if this is the way we get our first little reintroduction of Dodson? What do you think about that? Ooh. I mean, <laughs> um, I've I've made a video on mm -hmm. it because I thought it was it was worth talking about, and. Realistically speaking, there's some sort of rumors going around that apparently somebody from the live action films will be appearing in uh, Camp Cretaceous. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't really know who that could be. It could be Doctor Wu again, like he's already done. It could be Alan Grant, but again, they'll need to set up a new story for him could because be he has no reason to go back to the Paul islands. Kirby. So, yep, Kirby as well. <laughs> the, the return of Paul Kirby. That's the whole season. Well, that would be brilliant. <laughs> But when it, when it comes to Dodson, um, he, he kind of goes under the radar. He's already been teased, and we know who is the new actor for Dodson in, in Dominion. Right. So it's not like it's a million miles away. It's definitely... Um, it has a lot of potential for it to be Dodson, because he's been in live action, technically speaking. We don't know what he's been doing since uh, 1993 or 1994, and to kind of tell a bit of a backstory for him instead of wasting so much time in Dominion it'll be easy enough to say what he's been doing throughout Camp Cretaceous and then also maybe season 5 could reintroduce him again and he's doing some sort of operations and then that's how now that Biosyn's a big company that's how they're in Dominion and he takes the operations from Sauna to the mainland something of the sorts yeah I think he I mean if you if you reintroduce Dodson into season 4 you have the opportunity to play with the audience a bit because how would we know it's it's animated like they could he could lie and say he's anyone and at the end of the season he's like you know i'm lewis dodson and it would be a pretty big revelation or <laughs> that would be the best cliffhanger yeah it would be great and then on top of that you could also get the reintroduction of people like dr Wu, because uh, he he i mean he's got a lot of work to do at the lockwood manor creating the indoraptor and stuff so maybe yeah he he, he may came come back he may not I think the idea of Dodson being on Site B is just really interesting because we've got to have some sort of human element in this too, like a human villain. Mm. Um, it's not just going to be people versus dinosaurs. Even in Season 2, we had Mitch and Tiff. So there's going to be some sort of antagonizing. I, I would hope. I mean, um, it, it's, it's what I think would be theoretically the most fun for this season. Um, apart from that, we've got this whole unused plot points and I want to get your info on this because you've talked about it a lot but like the beacon that went off in season two the distress call that said hey help us we're stuck on Nublar and we already know that Roxy and Dave from season one wanted to go back to the island to save the kids six months have already gone by so like what's going on there is this plot point going to get picked up because now the kids are leaving Nublar so if people go to that island mm they're not going to have anyone to rescue, so... Um, I mean, it could set up a, a Dave and Roxy kind of spin-off TV or, series. Or just an episode, <laughs> like, awesome. where we flash back to Nublar and Roxy and Dave are like, where yeah, are the kids? Yeah. And that's where we get our one episode <laughs> with the T-Rex. It's like... <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, it's interesting, too, because we're going to have, basically, either this plot line's going to get dropped, and we're going to go with the kids on Sorna with, like male rexes and other raptors and the spino and other dinosaurs we probably haven't even seen yet or it, it, it's not i just can't see this season taking place on nublar so i don't think this plot point no. is really important uh what do you think like well the, it's it's a weird one because we know season two was supposed to be completely different it was supposed to have mitch and tiff working for manticorp hunting down a scorpius rex instead right. so it seems like it was rewritten quite a lot i actually and really like I, that I believe, early version that sounds far more yeah. interesting yeah i know it, it just sounds so much better and we actually get to see some form of manticorp as well mm -hmm. <laughs> but when, when it comes to the beacon i assume that might be one of those um storylines where originally it was supposed to be big 
and then eventually it was kind of dropped out and it wasn't supposed to happen yeah. and that's what we have now um, but it's weird because again the beacons on Isla Nublar the campers are leaving Isla Nublar I don't see the story being told on Nublar anymore so it would just be so weird if anybody does yeah, if anybody else gets the beacon, they'll be going to Nublar, but they'll have no purpose, there's no one there. There's That's like, why maybe we could have a spin-off. So. Yeah, but like, what do you do? Do you get like a spin-off episode with Bumpy? Like on Nublar, where Dave and Roxy go- <laughs> Camp Cretaceous Bumpy. Yeah, like, it just doesn't seem like that. This is the thing too, yeah. like, let's say all of our theorizing about Site B, Manticore, E750, Spinosaurus gets thrown out the window, the problem on the boat just has them crash back onto Nublar. Like, that to me would be incredibly anticlimactic. And I just yeah. couldn't see that being a fun way to do season four. It, 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 could, it, it could prove me wrong, but if that happens, don't you think that's a little too uh, silly? Or I mean, yeah. For granted, it's just you, you. You're just going back in time and redoing what you've already mm -hmm. done, and it's not. Personally speaking, I apologize if it is. If anybody else thinks it's differently, but I just don't think it's good script writing. It's not good story writing at yeah. all. To say, oh, these campers are finally leaving the island yet again, like we got at the start of season season three, I think, and then all of a sudden just to be washed back to shore. It it just doesn't doesn't ring well. I don't think it will sit well. With most of the no, I, I think unless in, in a way, I guess they could go back to Nublar for episode one, and then they may find another way to get to leave. Yeah. And when they stumble back, they might find someone's listened to the beacon. Or, I don't know, but personally speaking, I, I just wouldn't like to see them go back to Nublar. I wouldn't either. I think Nublar is kind of played out at this point. I think we've, we've yeah. been there for what three movies, three seasons of a TV show, um, and it's not even me saying that it would be a better idea to go to Site B. It's so much as it is like, what else can you do on that island? Mm. You know, we've gotten to the point where they were just throwing new species at us. <laughs> so, like, uh, we've we've been pretty much all around the... We even went to Jurassic Park. Like, we, we yeah, watched the visitor center, everything. like, get destroyed. There's nothing really left to do on Nublar. So, if we take... I guess they could try and tie in the Telltale game and make it canon and find the roller coasters or find the Druid. Yeah, the that, that, that's... But there's just not, not much yeah, to do Yeah, they've exhausted pretty much everything. But if they do go to Site B... We could see the worker village. We could see maybe, oh God, how cool it would be to see like... Ben Skeleton. Well, yeah, or, or the wreckage of the SS Venture, <laughs> like where they dropped the T-Rexes oh, yeah. off, like maybe it's stuck on the shore. The destroyed plane from JP3, the aviary, or um, there's, so much. there's so much they could do going to Site B. I would love to just see the game trail again. And and the yeah. kids go like, what the heck happened here? There's a whole bunch of old muddy track. I, no, I, I don't think any... Right, and... yeah. And when you look at um, like all of the callbacks that season three, two, and one all had back to original Jurassic or Jurassic Park, World, when yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, or, and Jurassic World as well. But when um, let's say they go to Sauna, there's so many callbacks they could do. If they introduce a Spinosaurus, Kenji could be scared, saying, "Darius, what is that? It sounds like a T-Rex." Darius could say, "No, it sounds bigger." <laughs> that way they call they call back to <laughs> Jurassic Park three. Or um, there could be like a, a, a little um, comment from Darius saying, don't go into the long grass. Oh, that'd be fun. And for obvious reasons. So there's, that's the thing. You go to a new island. Yes, we've already been there, but there's still so mu so many cool little things that you could do with that island in the Camp Cretaceous series that you couldn't do in a movie. Yeah. And I, I honestly think because Camp Cretaceous is animated and it's aimed for around uh, young ad adults, um, it's it's a way where you can add humor that you couldn't really add into a proper life. That's a good movie point. Well. They would get away with stuff like that in a cartoon more than exactly. And you know what? It would be so fun to see things that we wouldn't expect to ever see again. Like maybe they're on the boat and they they hit something underneath them. Like what was that? I don't know, but we're sinking. And you know the camera pans and it's like the wrecked RV that fell over the cliff. That like they're oh, scraped. That would be That'd awesome. be so cool. Um, but there's so many. I I just think. Fundamentally, from a like a storytelling perspective and, and an audience retention, go to site B, just go there. Yes. Like you, but and e even still, like we, if we don't go there, Jurassic Park Three is the last ever time we'll have anything to do with Isla the Sauna, unless obviously after Dominion. But I don't think they'll go down that line after Dominion. No, so not this after. Is no. Probably, yeah. This is probably the last opportunity we have to see anything to do with Isla the Sauna. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It would it would help explain a lot of the uh, 
And, you know, they, they set up all this mystery around Sorna and Fallen Kingdom that left a lot of fans discussing, like, what exactly was going on. And we know it's going to get followed up on in Dominion, but it just it, it feels like it's so perfect to do in Season 4 and, and possibly 5 of Camp Cretaceous. Yeah. So, like, I say they should do it. And I, I, I just, I think I'm so strongly in the direction of it being a different location because I feel like if they were to set it on Nublar again, it just would not be satisfying. Uh, I just, I don't see how, what else can you, and this was the issue a lot of film critics had with the Jurassic Park trilogy back when I was growing up, was like, you can only keep going back to islands in the same sort of cliched way so many times, and now we're in a a rut where it's like the same island, like for the last three seasons and movies, and so, just do site B. You've already said you're going to tie it into the next movie, which is on the mainland, which makes us feel like season four won't be on the mainland because it's too early in the timeline. So it's it's, it's a good wrapping up thing, too. And I think that it's the best opportunity. Um, watch none of this happens and they'll go to site C. Uh, but, but hey, <laughs> yeah. that's interesting, too. So <laughs> that's that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with mm-hmm. that. That's the thing, because I, I can pr- probably put money on it that we will go to site B. I think it's safe to I'm say gonna, in yeah. my eyes. Because it, it will be terrible script writing to not go to it. But at the same time, you look at how Camp Cretaceous has been left off in season one, two, and three, how it's been written out, the whole story behind it, and the fact that most of the story was also re-scripted by the sounds That's of it. That's true. They've still been able to write a brilliant story for all of these campers, and to make it seem realistic, whilst at the same time keeping to the to the kind of PG early years uh, rating to it, mm. it just... They've, they've done such a good job that I would not see them not go into to sauna. I think it's safe to say that it will be happening. Yeah, I hope so. And, and just imagine the ideas you could do. I mean, with the Mosasaurus free, oh, if it yeah, follows so the many. boat, like you could have a Spinosaurus and Mosasaurus fight. You could have like... The, the thing is, why would they show that episode of Fallen Kingdom, like, you know, right at the start of Fallen Kingdom, with the Mosasaur jumping out, if they weren't going to intend to use this, the Mosasaur next. Oh, I agree. Because that would be one of those little things where people would be like, oh yeah, it released in Fallen Kingdom. It went into the to the main ocean. We completely forgot about mm-hmm. that when they see it in, let's say, episode one. Yeah, it's, they just, they're going to do something with the boat getting in trouble and they're going to do something with them going somewhere else. The Mosasaurus would be a perfect catalyst for some more action, especially since it's one of people's favorite animals in the Jurassic World trilogy. And like it was, in my, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone's opinion, severely underutilized in Fallen Kingdom. So like um, it, a great way to keep having it in the series would be Camp Cretaceous. So exactly. I, I just, there's so much going on here. And, and generally speaking, we know nothing of season four. So it's actually kind of interesting. We were able to talk this much about it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think this pretty much wraps up every plot point we could possibly go over in terms of, where the story is headed but site b spinosaurus e750 possibility definitely something bad is going to happen to the boat manticore might come back we could even get some biosynthesis in there it's going to tie into dominion but apart from that this is all just speculation and theories so uh it's interesting uh i'm, I'm glad that you came on today swerve uh it's it's cool to talk this uh, about all this stuff with you and uh you seem to be. It, it is exciting. You seem to be of the same mind as me as uh, on all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it kind of all adds up, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Especially with the Spinosaurus, for instance. Like, it, it's the only non-confirmed hybrid species, or species, sh- shall we say, for the hybrid of E750 as well on the on the laptop from season one. So that's right. Maybe they're waiting to confirm the Scorpius Rex had Spinosaurus DNA once the Spinosaurus is shown off. So, yeah, you know, and, a lot of things are adding up. So. It, there's also all that stuff that they tease with the amalgam testing and like the illegal cloning. Right, so yeah. Site B just, it makes too much sense to be in season four. Um, but yeah, I think we've talked about this to death enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks for coming on the channel again, Swerve. It's always fun. Of course, my yeah, pleasure. Uh, and I'll keep a link in the description down below, guys, if you want to check out his channel, which uh, actually has a video coming out soon with me in it on uh, some more Season 4 theories. But as always, Swerve, really appreciate you stopping by, and it's fun talking uh, Camp Cretaceous and Jurassic World with you. Of course, likewise. 
Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it really means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.